I'm gonna get straight into the science of Star Citizen in this video and talk about the new power system being developed, what its implications are to ship design, ship components, impact to salvage, and of course, what this means for the exciting and sexy career of engineering. Well, Scotty, now you've done it. Aye, the haggis is in the fire for sure. Let's start off with this power system and get an understanding of what it is we're really talking about. Originally, this was called the pipe system, but CAG realized that they needed something more expansive to cover all the different kinds of utilities and gameplay that they wanted around a ship's power. Uh, yeah, it's definitely more than uh, just power. So um, when we started building our ships and building our environments, we started building with uh, what we call the pipe system. And uh, this uh, system, uh, while it did its job pretty well, uh, it's already a bit old and we're only using it right now for limited things. What we're trying to build is a system that encompasses all the resource generation and how you control items. And so when we're talking resource generation, I'm talking power, I'm talking CPU, I'm talking fuel, I'm talking coolant, I'm talking any type of other resource that we'll have in the future ammo and all this stuff. So what we've seen in concept to us recently seems to be a first step towards this new power system. So we started by creating this small example of a ship where we have a power plant, we have a, a fuel tank, a battery, uh, we have lights inside the ship, uh, we have turrets, we have weapons. Now I realize that was purely concept, but there were a couple key things mentioned. He talked about the introduction of a couple new components we haven't heard about before, relays and batteries. These are new things that sound like they'll be introduced into our ships, which may have huge implications. Relays are a new concepts that we're, we're introducing in the ship in order for all those resources to travel from the fuel tank to the power plant, from the power plant to the, to the battery, from the battery to the lights. Everything travels through this, uh, this, uh, these relays. There's a lot of ways these components could manifest themselves. They could be actual physical components embedded throughout our ships, things we can interact with, components we can purchase, things we can upgrade, items we can salvage, basically treated like the components we have now and with what we've understood as future gameplay around components. But our ships don't have these relays or batteries in them now. It's a new concept. Does this mean that every ship might have to get a little rework to embed these new components into them? And if so, is that a big deal? Well, it might depend. Batteries big enough to even temporarily power a large ship might require some head scratching to fit in. But I can see a relay they might create as being a fairly small item, maybe only as big as your fist. I think most ships probably have a little space here and there to carve out a design slot to fit in some relays. Big ships, like they illustrated with the hammerhead, might have quite a few of these things, but if they're fairly generic in size and function, then it might not be a big deal, particularly because many ships have to be reworked for physicalized components anyway. And even though the piping between the relays and components creates interactions between them, they might not need to physicalize actual tubing or wiring. That's something they could probably leave out or push way into the future. The items themselves just need to work. There is another option where they may not even have to make them physicalized. It's possible that the relays in particular could be more virtual and could be manipulated through one of the many engineering stations or co-pilot seats we see throughout a lot of the ships. Even if they do make them physical items, it makes sense to me for them to have them displayed this way on screens. As an engineer, you'd be able to see a map of the relays and components connected throughout the ship, rather than running from one end of the ship to the other, madly throwing switches and trying to determine optimal routes for power while things are failing during a battle or traveling in a dangerous nebula, you'd be able to see the whole situation laid out in front of you. 
and make strategic decisions, highlighting relays and clicking switches on the panel to turn them off or on. This makes a lot more sense as a way to control things, but knowing CIG, my guess would be that we'd have some of both. Physical items embedded in the ships that are there to replace, upgrade, or salvage, and displayed maps of the system's power distribution to perform basic operations. If you put both these things together, this sounds like a really cool job for engineering. During the act of leaving atmosphere, the captain expects you to have all the power plants online and several relay paths active to power the engines and thrusters to prevent anything from getting burnt out or experiencing some sort of catastrophic failure. An attack can happen at any time, and the captain expects his chief engineer to respond quickly and make sure that all shields and weapons are fully powered. Then, if the battle isn't going well, that engineer also has to help ensure the escape by ensuring the quantum drive has a secure route of power that hasn't been damaged, and might have to make a split-second decision on compromises to other systems. Doing this role of the engineer is probably not something you want a random hired hand to be in control of. I'm responsible for the safety of this ship. Each ship is going to have a unique number of components and its own routing of power and relays. A good engineer will need to know that particular ship's wiring like the back of his hand. I know this ship like the back of my hand. The characters we play in Star Citizen don't have skill progression. Chris Roberts' vision was that the players themselves would be the ones that would need to grow their own skills and progress through their own actions of playing the game. It's similar to other aspects of the game. Once you know the controls for flying, any player can fly any ship. But as anyone will tell you who's played the game and flown different types of ships, they all handle a little bit differently and it takes a little while to become accustomed to the acceleration, turning, deceleration, size and general positioning of the ship relative to the ground, all of that across the different types of ships. This engineering role also sounds like it will be best performed by someone who's spent time on a ship and has memorized the optimal and alternative power distributions and the precise locations of the relays in case they need to be replaced while in flight. Falling through a planet's atmosphere and plummeting to its surface is not a time for an engineer to try to figure out where a key relay is to restore power to the thrusters. As an engineer, your main, your main goal is going to be to keep your ship as operational and as efficient as possible. So let's say now I'm transporting goods. I'm just moving from A to B. It's a crew, pleasure cruise, no problem. I never want to travel like this. Each of these relays is going to be a drain on resources. So I'm going to turn this one off because I can, I can turn this one off and I can turn this one off. And power, power and resources still have a route to travel. And I'm still keeping everything online. I'm trying to minimize the number of things that I'm powering on the ship. So this would be a, a viable configuration in which I'm, I'm still keeping everything on the ship fully functional. But let's say I go into battle. With this configuration into battle, if I take a hit here and this gets shot or gets sabotaged, I instantly lost to half of my firing pow firepower. So it's a good thing to use when you're not in danger. When you're in danger, you just switch stuff uh, to a more redundant system. Besides this, with all the overclocking and setting power levels, setting resource levels for each item, setting priorities, I think that the engineer is going to be a, a crucial part of the ship. But let's pivot here a little bit and talk about what this power distribution system means for salvage. Because according to Todd Pappy, this new system falls directly in the path of us being able to have that career. Maybe lay out this, the, the salvage roadmap for us. What's, uh, how does this, how do, how do we see this going forward? So right now uh, we're working on power and we're basically getting that working the way that it's supposed to be working. Um, so it's scalable. And then from there, we're working on uh, getting all the items placed in, in uh, the ships for component retrieval. It's actually getting the items in, getting 
been placed within ships, getting power running, getting pipes working the way that we need it to work so that um, so that you can take it out of ships, but at the same time, when you're actually in the ship, you have the multi crew gameplay of actually removing those items or switching them out on the fly if you're flying around or, or even if you're in battle. So this power system needs to be in place to some extent for the salvage to work. It hasn't been 100% clear to me why it has to have the power system to be able to yank out a component, but I'll just take it as a fact that it needs to be there. It's possible it's all part of the salvaging mechanics we'll do for components, where the gameplay they've conceived about removing a component requires turning power off to it from one or more of the relays before being able to remove it. Or perhaps they have planned more of an engineering interaction for removing it, where it's physically plugged in in some way, and it takes some care and skill to detach it from the cabling or pipes without damaging it and devaluing it. Some sort of thing that we have to do, similar to mining, where it's more than just pointing a laser at rocks and nomming it up. It's also very possible, if these new relays and batteries are physicalized, that they're also salvageable items and can be swapped and upgraded just like any other component. If we look back to some very early CIG discussions around engineering, they had talked about the engineer being able to tinker with components and being able to configure or enhance them a little beyond their default capacity. There's also been the subcomponents intended for components. So even though a lot of the power allocations might just happen through a screen terminal, there might be some scrambling about the ship, replacing subcomponents and relays that are burning out or getting damaged. Which is another thing that every game needs. Various money sinks that give you a reason to do things, earn money, and in this case, maintain your ship through replacement parts to keep it in working order. I've heard them talk about having SCU space on ships, but not just for running cargo, also for storing spare parts and components and things like that. And it makes sense if this is gonna be a major part of the gameplay to have this engineering role and being able to do that. I love the idea of tinkering with your ship, and right now, we can do none of it. But I hope this power system is the gateway to CIG being able to implement other gameplay items and careers. And being Scotty on board my own ship or someone else's just seems really cool. But I never wanted to be anything else but an engineer.